Here I have an old guitar where some of the top had been unglued. Um, I marked the areas here, here, and here where there's where there's an obvious overhang on the top, and then the back, which looks like it had been glued again with something um, that I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, it's actually the top is in from the back, from the sides. Um, so we'll see how that goes in removing it. One of the braces on the back was already out. Um, this one I think was fine. If, if, we'll see when I take it apart, I guess. It looked fine from the inside. This one here was out and these next two were not glued uh, entirely all the way through. You can actually hear them in there. Let's just see how far we can go with this without any heat. I've got my spatula there heated in a heat pot. You can see where there was some repairs tried to be done at times. Here it's all good. We'll see see how it lifts in those places. I may have to provide heat and I may not. So far it couldn't be easier. Um, again, I'll be probably plagued with the glue on the back, but we'll see when we get there. The knife I've got is, is thicker at this end and, and thinner at that. It's about nine thousandths of an inch at the at the very tip. But as I bring it this way, it thickens up. So if we just want a tiny bit in there. We've got it, and if we want to really move it, uh, we can push it along. But it seems to be obviously it wasn't glued there at all. Yeah, and here, so we got most of the top taken off, and here I feel I'm a little bit plagued with the back. So what I'm going to do is just take a sharp little exacto knife and just poke away at that glue back there. No real telling what this is. But so far it appears to be quite strong. I might just have to poke at it. moving along some through that glue. 
and I've worked my way to the center for sure. And the old glue's coming off. So let's continue with that. get to that spot. See that the old finish and the glue are pulling up a bit there, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue because it has to be removed. Otherwise, this guitar just won't be playable. wasn't attached at all. This brace uh, only attached at that end. So this is what we've got to work with. A little bit of uh, the tail block came up there. When looking at, at this, um, it appears like this may have been an original brace that maybe fell out and uh, maybe they cut it shorter. Um, I'm not quite sure. Certainly it's not rounded like the others are. This one actually was unglued as well. I couldn't quite tell when looking through the F holes, but that one was unglued. So all four will have to be glued and it appears like uh, maybe uh, brace number two here will have to be re reformed, uh, rebuilt. The braces here seem very well attached. So no problems that I can see with the top. There's a bit of kerfing missing here. I'll look into that. Um, otherwise, top seems okay. And it came off relatively cleanly. We'll sand that. So I got some 80 grit sandpaper and let's get started. Clean with again uh, 80 grit uh, paper, clean the edge of the back. The little bit that was caught on the tail block, I just kind of lifted it off with a chisel and then I'll just sand along the edge. One thing to note here, too, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but these braces are actually flat. They're terribly curved in um, the top, um, but flat, you know, very curved on the top. I don't know if you can see there, but like extremely curved on the top. Uh, right there, maybe. But, uh, yeah, flat on the 
braces of the back. Now I'm going to try to glue these. I've got it clean, vacuumed. I haven't taken that one off yet, but I'll start with this one. I've got a little mark. Before I actually took it off, I marked a little mark there so to identify where it is and we clearly see where the shading was. Maybe I'll just mark another couple of marks on the edges too. That won't hurt at all. And this is where we'll be putting it. Um, I'll be using some hot hide glue that I've got in a pot here. And the idea is to put it on relatively fast. And let's go for it. Hot high glue doesn't creep like modern glues, so kind of just put it in place and we're we're there. Now let's place a new brace right where this one appears to have been cut off. to be in this area here where there was no kerfing I just made a tiny bit kerfing here and we'll kind of wedge it in that corner It'll just make a bit more reinforcement for the top and the sides since it's missing. As I said earlier, all the top braces are, are, are glued. Um, as you put the feeler gauge to the edge, it's all fine. There is a bit of a spot there that it goes in just a tiny bit and a bit there. So what I'm going to do is put some glue in there. Just a bit of added security. While we're, while we're at it. Earlier I thought all the braces were well glued because I was checking uh, the very bottom, but I also noticed uh, there's a crack. I'm going to inject some glue in this one and pass a small clamp through this F-hole. It'll work. So let's look at carving the brace at this point. We'll carve away at this spruce.
We got the brace curved and uh, we'll put a little bit of tobacco brown and some straw on there and just to darken it up a tiny bit to make it look not so new. So that'll help it blend in just a bit better. We're going to be putting some hot hide glue on this top and hopefully clamping it in short time. Glue seems good. After taking off all the clamps, it um, seems like the back glued up very well. Um, didn't see any markings of a guitar brand inside. If anybody knows what this might be, let me know. So the first fret here is 48 thousandths of an inch. If I set a feeler gauge to 48 thousandths of an inch, plus 30 thousandths of an inch, um, and the big E string will be anywhere between 52 and 54 thousandths of an inch. So if we go half of that at 26. Um, so we've got a height of 48, 30, and 26. And this will give us our first line. We will take the 26 thousandths of an inch off. And basically we still have that 48 and 30. 30 gives us plenty of room to go by, uh, especially at this spot, because even 30 thousandths of an inch above the first fret is too high. So we're aiming at too high at first to then bring it down. Um, there we are. And so there's two marks, not far from one another, but this will give us a bearing on where we're going to be. So the nut work has begun.
I'm following the green lines. marks now we'll start to File away. I got a twelve thousandth of an inch. We'll switch it to sixteen. Twenty six. the first three and then the D will go to and then the D will go to 36 and 50 and 60. Those aren't too deep yet. Um, I will kind of double check along the way here. And usually I'm pretty close. Yeah, there won't be much adjustment needed here. The B possibly could go this way and the D slightly that way, but we're terribly close. And this starts off the uh, shape of our nut. I don't have the nut set at the right height yet. Uh, what I want to first determine is how uh, much to lower the saddle. I have to lower the base side by three sixteenths and the treble side by a quarter. There's plenty of room to lower on the saddle. That's where I'm going to start and then slowly adjust both sides so that they're uh, a proper playing um, height. So. That's where I want to first safely go to. It's still going to be too high, but uh, let's start. After finding the center with the center finding ruler, I'm going to then take my string spacing rule here, find it right down the middle, because I already found the middle, and then I can put my marks along the way. So let's see about cutting into those. Six we've had here at the G string. And a 
32 or a 36 that we had here at the D. And A, 50 at the A, and a 60 at the end. I'll double check. As I leaned on that one, it should be pretty good. Really couldn't be more perfect. I need to remove some more from the saddle, and I don't want to remove too much from the top uh, because we have an arch here, and we don't want to make it too uh, weak in the middle. So I got to remove some from each edge now. So I've got the saddle lowered, but it's certainly nowhere near the right uh, shape yet. So I installed this extremely low tack tape on the guitar, and I found where the um, intonation will be best at, and I will put some sandpaper over the low tack. Um, the sandpaper sticks, it'll stick much uh, more aggressively than this um, tape. So now it's just a matter of basically judging where the strings will be. Seems like it was certainly sanding there more and sanding here more. So I'll put some white uh, lines there. So there's certainly more to remove there and more to remove here. So we'll continue on with this. After getting the nut file down to about 30 thousandths of an inch above the first fret, um, I'm going to then eyeball the nut slots so that they're not too deep and sand away at them on this belt sander. The idea is to still give yourself some room on the big E string and and just uh, shallower as you go towards the little E string. So I've done some of the work of, of bringing it down on the belt sander, but we'll kind of finesse it with these files. process is to still leave this too long, but to get the nut slots about 30 thousandths of an inch above the first fret at this stage, uh, which I measure with my um, gauge, and then we will, uh, once it's glued, take it down to the right height. Making a soft, gentle curve, trying to not to take any off where the bottom is. And the bottom will be sanded on, on 120 grit paper, just a couple of swipes like that, just to scratch up the bottom so that the glue adheres. But the rest of the nut will be sanded smooth. This is just 180 here at this point, but I'll sand it up to, to 800 and then pass it on to my uh, buffing wheel.
There are polishing papers you can use too if you don't have a buffing wheel. Polishing papers work really well. Now with the nut uh, kind of fitted to where I've got equal distance on both sides. It's a slightly wider nut spacing and we've got you know about an eighth of an inch basically on each side so it would have even been narrower which is um, too narrow for anybody's taste. So now we will just mark along the way. This is my process for building a new nut. So the pencil line is never you know super Perfect. So we just give it a rough idea. And now we will slack off the strings and take it to the belt sander. I'm taking it as close to those lines as I can. The process now is to put some low tack tape on this side and put some strong brown tape upon it. The low tack tape will be great for not uh, allowing the finish to pull off and the brown tape will be strong enough to not allow the file to go through the tape. So I leave the inside strings quite slack. The two outside strings are quite, uh, well, fairly tight, enough that I can push it away. Um, I have to take more away from this end, so this is how I play this out. I'll use my medium file here, and I'll just file away where it appears I need to file. My finger will protect it from sliding to that side. The tape, if it slides away, will just hit this tape. And from directly above, I can kind of see where I need to take some of the nut away. I'm filing in a bit of a curve that usually helps match the fingerboard to, or the net profile. <sighs> Meanwhile, always pulling it back so I can see where it needs the most filing. <sighs> and every so often, checking to see where my progress is with the distance. Um, I still need to file because it needs to be this way more. So on we keep going. And we will basically do the same this way. Um, here, the tape will go on this side, as I will be working again right handed, but from here. So, again, if I slip, it'll fall onto the tape, and my finger prevents it from the other side. Again, I push the nut away, pull it back to see where I'm at. And this is my process. Getting quite close. Of course, at this point, I can kind of, I don't need to measure quite as often because I can feel this edge with my fingernail and know kind of where we're at. And uh, it's coming along quite good. So again, with the fine and extra fine. Feels pretty smooth. Yeah, that feels pretty smooth and just a smidge. 
there. Measure correctly. Well, that seems pretty good. So we'll move on from there. Now I'm going to file away at the edges like this so it doesn't feel so harsh on your hand. It's a matter of curving it over. Again, a matter of just curving this over. This face must remain flat. And then I just kind of take a piece of sandpaper and just soften it up. It's a 320 at this point. Maybe a 500. Here's a 600. Now sometimes I'll just take a little bit off the edge on the bottom so it's not so sharp but um, I wouldn't want to take it with anything more than a five or six hundred so you really don't want to curve it Then I've got an 800. So then there are, you know, polishing papers you can use, um, you know, blue is 1200, pink is 4000, the aqua is 6000, so it does shine it up pretty good. I'll kind of show you what we get with it. Blue, pink. does make the nut fairly nice, but I will pass it through my buffer. Once I buffed it, I lay it on some 120 paper and just scratch the bottom a couple of times and then that's, uh, that's going to adhere much better. So let's glue it. I guess I might have forgot to put the camera on record, but I put a little bit of tight bond glue all along the bottom. Uh, not very much. Cleaned up a tiny bit of spill out that was there. Um, try to center it best we can. That feels really good there. Double check where we're at. Uh, that's looking quite good there. Nice smooth feel. Now we're going to file the nut slots to the proper depth. 
this first one I had measured at 33. So, 60 thousandths of an inch is what we're using. And the idea is to just do a few passes. Never tilt the file this way. You at least want it level and then this way. Make sure everything's tuned up. And then we measure. So from zero there, we're at, you know, 27 thousandths of an inch. So we keep doing this till we get down to, I might like it to 22, 23 for this one. On an acoustic guitar, I don't want it to be too, too low. Now we're at 25, so we're getting close. The aim is to take them all to around 20 thousandths of an inch. So here, we're at 22, and as we press the string both sides of the first fret, you can see it goes to 22 thousandths. So that's going to be a good height for that string. <clears throat> the next, and of course I'll document it on here. So my next one. Uh, was at 30 thousandths of an inch. So we will lower that one. Uh, Stumac sells these little tiny uh, string lifters that I just put a piece of rosewood on, make the handle longer, and we can just lift it away and do our filing as we did with the other one. Sometimes I like to widen the back end out with a slightly wider um, width. And uh, let's see where we're at with this one. We're still at 25 or so, so a little bit lower. At this point, we don't need to file too aggressively. And there, we're also at 22. So that'll be good. Maybe the next one's at 21 and the last two at 20. Here's the finished uh, nut. Um, I overshot this one by taking it down to 20 thousandths of an inch rather than the 21 I first mentioned. So what I did is just took this one down. Now we have 22, 21, 20, 20, 20, 20. Uh, so anywhere right around 20 is good. I just always like to keep my bass strings just a little bit higher. Um, a thousandth of, thousand of an inch is not a whole, whole lot. Um, a standard piece of paper, like the paper I was writing on, is four thousandths of an inch thick. So um, as long as you get it somewhere in that 20,000 range, we're good. And so that is the, uh, that is the new nut. You can see how if we'd have put white bone, it would have been very different than this, this yellow color. And the yellow looks good on older instruments rather than the white. And here we've got the finished guitar. The back glued up well, nice and strong now. Um, the edges are softened up with a bit of uh, color on those parts that projected over. You could take a router and route them um, snug, but where this was already projecting over, we brought it back to kind of where it was that way. 
and uh, yeah, an old guitar restored.